Hey guys, welcome to the workshop. So today's video, I wanted to go back in time and talk about one of my old projects and honestly, one of the oldest videos I have, so stick around. So I've had a lot of people ask me some updates on different projects and so I wanted to do a video series that was basically giving you an update on some of my older projects, seeing where they're at, how they've turned out, what projects have actually gone in the trash and which ones I'm actually still using. But I didn't want to just stand in front of the camera and just talk and talk and talk. So what I'm going to do is actually watch that video along with you, kind of give my reaction to my own video, comment on it, comment on maybe some of the video techniques that I used in it and also pause throughout it, give you updates, tell you how things have changed, and go from there. And for the first video we're gonna do, we're gonna go all the way back to my third video, which was how to make new wood look old. So just to set this up really quick, uh, this video is actually my fourth video, not the third video. I just said the wrong thing. And basically, uh, this video, there's so much that has changed. In fact, my whole way of doing this has totally changed. And I'm gonna cover that in a whole other video that actually is going to be posted and published the same day as this one. So once you're done watching this video, go watch the new version of How to Distress Wood. But if you haven't watched my original one, I would highly suggest stopping this video, go watch that, come back and start this one over again. But we're going to jump right into it. And uh, here we go. <laughs> you can really tell some, a lot has changed in the shop. Just on that note, I don't even have that shirt anymore. Some tools. Okay, well, I'm going to stop right there. Um, these tools that are being shown right now, they are totally none of the tools that I use anymore. And none of them are really bad, but as you'll see later in the video, and we're not going to watch the whole thing. I think at the end, it just I don't need to go to the extreme. Um, the angle grinder with that, that certain disc, it works great, looks good, but I've had some comments, and I tend to agree with the comment on it's extremely un safe i use it in a very unsafe manner um as you'll see later in the video um, i'll hit on that again later but very unsafe the other tools are just beater tools uh, you can use anything for, for that matter and then the little paddle with all the screws sticking out that's something that i don't do anymore um, i don't think it's necessary because the new way i do it i kind of accomplish the same thing now i usually try to gather some different tools things that have different shapes to them that I can pound into the wood because what we're going to be doing is using them as hammers on the wood. <laughs> I'll also use an angle grinder with a Z grit flat disc. Some people call it a tiger palm. The next one is a homemade paddle. And My shots are very boring. An idea of a hammer. Got much better at inter interjecting uh, B-roll footage. What this I've was a really long process here. Board and put several screws in it at random. And now you can't even see what I'm talking about. And just screwed it onto this hammer handle so that I can pound into my board. So let's get started. First thing I do is I start with my board. I just sit it there and I take this. Now what this is going to do is basically... Funny thing, I still have the board up here on the shelf. Hit your board. I've never used it for anything. And once, you've, once you've done that, take it, scrape it. created um, fake looking wormholes and also just some distress marks. And also take some tools. They don't have to have, you don't have to use the exact same thing, which is what I tend to do. And take the corner of that and just kind of dig it in there. This one here for a different shape. Yeah. So actually this is a good point here. You know, I'm beating this thing with, what, three different tools. And uh, you can actually use very many tools. In fact, one of the things a lot of people use are actually real heavy chains. Kind of throw it on the board and beat the board. <coughs> Woo. Ah, i got to clean up the sawdust in here. 
So that works really well too, but um, this you can use basically anything. Whatever you have. There you go, whatever you have. The next step can be a little tricky. What you're going to do is hold this board and with your angle grinder, take it pretty hard into the wood, just like this. Now, I've mm -hmm. done this quite a few times, so I hold the board with my hand. You might want to put it in some sort of vise, or even if there's something where you hold it up against something, and do it like that, so that you don't accidentally hurt yourself. So, watch really closely here. You're going to see an accident. Right here, it's coming up. Right now. See that? It, it dug into the wood really hard and almost ran away from me. That's exactly why this is the super dangerous way of doing it. And I highly suggest not to do this anymore. If you're gonna do this, clamp the thing down, put the handle on the angle grinder and have two hands on that so you've got full control over it. Uh, even wear gloves maybe it's just really not a safe way so um, I apologize to anybody that might have done this and maybe got hurt so I really hope that uh, that's not the case but um, definitely not the safest way once I've done that that's primarily the most distressing I'll do on that and as you can see roughed up the edges and then by taking this in this manner, you kind of put fake saw marks in it. And of course gouging it also works well, really well as well. And the very last thing I do before I go into the, the staining process is I run a little light sand over it. And all that's going to do is get rid of the real big burrs. We're going to stop right there. Uh, we're going to stop there for, I think that's about it. The, the rest of it is on staining, and I could just talk to you about that. Um, and basically, the sanding part here, I still do no matter what, because when you distress something, you're going to end up with a lot of little pieces of wood or little curly cube pieces of wood, um, and you don't want that in your finished product. So I'd still sand it down. I just use a really fine grit so that it gets a little smoother um, and just knocks those edges down. So when it comes to the staining part in the video, I actually use this black paint water mixture to, and I really watered down the black paint to put over the whole thing. The black paint would go into all these little holes and crevices and then you'd wipe it away pretty quick and it would leave that paint in there. You let it dry, and then stain it and basically just gave this really dark effect to all those holes. Well, that part and that process is completely unnecessary because when you put stain on this board, a lot of that stain is just going to go in the hole and when you wipe it away you're not going to get all those things out of the holes so you're still going to have some stain left in that and honestly that's going to give you the exact same effect. So guys thank you for watching this video. If this is something you enjoyed and you'd like to see some more of this kind of content please leave me a comment below and give me a thumbs up. I'm going to do a lot more of these things. I'm going to start from obviously right now till up to the present time and kind of hit on a lot of the videos that I've done and give you updates. Uh, I've had a lot of requests to give update on my wooden kitchen countertop and that video will be coming up probably within the next couple months after it gets a little bit more use. But so far so good. So guys thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to this channel if this is something you enjoy or if you like stuff that's DIY, if you want some woodworking tips or if you just like to watch projects. Those are all things that I do on this channel. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you next time right here in the workshop.